so the, I'm going to be sharing with you the last 10 verses of Surah Ali Imran. And before I jump into the verses, I want to share a very uh, relevant hadith uh, in regards to these verses and is actually related to the Asbab al Nazul. Um, <clears throat> so after the Prophet وسلم, uh, had passed away, a lot of the Sahabas were reminiscing. Uh, and missing the Prophet وسلم, and wanted to, you know, seek what his day-to-day -day lifestyle was, what he would used to do, and they would often talk about these things. And one of these uh, individuals being Ata ibn Abi Rabbah, who wanted to know more about this, he went to uh, the mother of the believers, Aisha radiyatala anha, and he asked her, um, oh, oh, Aisha radiyatala anha, oh, mother of the believers, uh, can you tell me something unique about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And so she thought about it for a moment and she said, um, isn't everything unique about the Messenger? Um, which is true. Uh, and then she thought more about to, uh, what to, to, to give him to, as an answer. And so she recalled a an, 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 an one night uh, specifically, and, and so she narrates this uh, to, to Ata, uh, and she says that this one night I was with the Prophet Sallallahu and he was laying with me, and he asked me if uh, he can if he can part to to pray to to pray to his Lord to pray Qiyamul Layl, and uh, after seeking permission, he made wudu and he started the the night prayer. And as he was praying, he cried so much that his beard was dripping with the tears. And he continued to pray and he did the same in ruku and he would cry. And then he went to sujood and he cried. And she said that I, had, I hadn't seen him weep so much. It got to the point where it was time for Fajr and Bilal who came and he called the messenger uh, that uh, it is time for prayer and upon seeing the condition of the Prophet Sallallahu he, he says my master why do you weep like this isn't that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has already forgiven all your sins past and future and in response the Prophet Sallallahu said that should I not continue to be a grateful servant and in offering this gratitude of mine why should I not shed these tears? Especially tonight when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed these last 10 verses and he went on to recite them. And the last part of this hadith, which I wanted to specifically highlight, he said, ruined is the person who recited these verses but does and failed to deliberate about them. So this is a very star, uh, staunch warning to individuals, to us, to not just gloss over these very important verses. And so I wanted to take some time now and go through uh, the last 10 verses of, of Surah Al Imran and the ones that the Prophet ﷺ is alluding to in the, in the mentioned hadith. So to start by saying, Inna fi samawati wal ard wa layli wa nahari la ayati li al Indeed, in the alteration of this. Uh, indeed, in the creation of the sky and the earth and the alteration of the night and the day are miraculous signs for the people who think. And what's amazing is that uh, this is the, the last verses of Surah Al Imran and in the latter part of Surah Baqarah, these, uh, a very similar verse uh, came in, uh, except in, instead of just a few items that were mentioned, it, that verse was much longer and it, it, it accounted for a lot more. But the slight difference, uh, another slight difference is that in, in these verse, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is li ulil albab. It is for those people who have a sound mind. So uh, the, what is essentially being asked of us is that 
we are individuals that have a clear mind who have a, an understanding of what they're trying to do or what they have a, they have the wisdom or the foresight this aspect of it just the creation of these skies and earth just looking at the stars and the moon and how the night changes into the day and how the day changes into night that in it is sufficient to come to a realization and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to then discuss who are these people who are these people of al-bab the the one who have this sound mind alladhina yadhkuruna allah qiyaman wa qurudan the ones who make mention of allah when they are standing and when they are sitting wa ala junubihim and while they are on their side i e these individuals are constantly making remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's not the fact that you know when we are in a state of prayer that we have to be that we have to limit ourselves to the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it was just mentioned the creation of the skies and the earth i whenever we're walking around when we're looking at the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should be able to admire it but not just from a a physical beauty but from the fact that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's majesty that he was he created something of this magnitude uh, as for us to be able to appreciate and hence if we have that sound mind we can then connect that back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being our creator wa yatafakkaruna fi khalqis samawat and they do fikr and they they ponder in the create in the creation of the skies and the earth wa fi khalqis samawati wal ard and you know this word of uh, tafakkar it's it's a very powerful word and for those who can who speak urdu i think the idea of fikr in urdu it does the best justice of how i can get one to explain how what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really asking to do and i know it has a negative connotation in the urdu language of of almost worrying but the idea is you are const that that something is constantly on your mind something is bothering you so for example if your kids have a curfew and it's one hour past curfew uh and you're still waiting uh for your son to come home even if, as you're eating dinner washing the dishes watching tv on the back of your mind you're thinking where's my son you know what's he doing where's he at is he okay and that idea of fikr that concern that you have this is what allah subhanahu wa that's the status or that that's what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do in regards to his creation in regards to the creation of the skies and the earth that whenever we see them or whenever we're going somewhere whenever we're going out for our drive when we're at work when we're at school we want to have this conscious awareness that am i understanding my creator am i uh, being grateful for what he has given me am i um do i see the beauty in this creation for what it is or am i just being um fake about it and so this is the the level of of uh, concern and thought that we are asked to have about uh these things and it's amazing um hasan al basri he says tafakkaru sa'a khayru min qiyam al layl that an hour spent thinking is better far more better than the whole night standing in worship and we know the maqam of the worship of nighttime that this is one of the best things that we as believers can do but here hasan and basri is telling us that this is also very important the idea of just spending time to appreciate and to to do tafakkur to have this ulul albab to become that qaumul um yaqilun as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often mentions to be of a nation that thinks and ponders about the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um and in, in another uh narration hazrat bashar hafi he says if people pondered over the greatness of allah almighty it would have become impossible for them to remain sinful and disobedient so all what we're really lacking with our relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is often that the fact that we say that we're unable to see we're unable to feel that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's presence in our life 
but it's actually our own lack of self-reflection. It's our own lack of understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually provided so many signs, you know, whether it's the heart, whether it's the human body, the ocean, the waves, the boats, the stars, the trees, and you, you can name lists throughout the Quran. And he's given us so much opportunity and so many signs that will lead us back to think to him, think about him. But it's just a matter of our own um, lack of 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 of, of um, thought to to get to that process. So, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, going back, uh, he, He's giving these qualities of these individuals who are uh, who have sound minds, right? The ulul albab. So alladina yaskuruna Allah qiyama wa qurudan wa ila junubihim. They're in constant remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Whether they're standing, whether they're sitting, whether they're on their side. Fi khalqis wa yatafakkaruna fi khalqis samawat. And they ponder and they think about what uh, in the creation of the skies and the earth. Rabbana ma khalaqta hada batila. And so when they when they do this thought, when they when they are going through this process, then they say, Oh, our or <clears throat> Excuse me, you have not created any of this in vain or in falsehood. That there's a purpose, there is a higher purpose, there is more to this world than what meets the eye. And then you glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanak. In one word, you tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, you are above all of this. You are, you, there's no, um, any type of, 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 um, smear or anything that these people are saying against you is you are above all of this and immediately out of that tongue of that individual who has done this reflection now you realize the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're in awe and the first dua that you make amongst the others that are about to come oh allah protect us from the from the punishment of the fire because we know the capability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We understand the, the grandioseness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we're asking for that protection. And, and the dua continues. This was just the first part. This was just um, something that just comes from the heart when you, when you do this uh, process. And, and then the, the dua continues. رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ مَنْ تُدْخِلِ النَّارَ فَقَدْ أَخْزَيْتَ and now you're asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you're, you're telling them that indeed, whoever you have made to enter the fire, فَقَدْ أَخْزَيْتَ They have been humiliated. And this idea of humiliation is going to come back again. So, to, so keep a, a lookout for that, that, that the one who has been, you have forsaken to the fire, they have for surely, um, they have already been humiliated. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ and for the for these oppressors, for these oppressors, there's not going to be a single helper helper on that day. There's nobody that would be able to help them. Rabbana innana sami'na munadiyin yunadi lil iman. O our Lord, indeed we heard the call of a caller towards iman. We heard this call, and aminu, and he was calling to believe. Bi rabbikum, and what he was calling to believe in our in your Lord. So he, we were we were in this state of pondering and reflecting, and then there was a, a caller that came, and he said, "Believe in your Lord." And this was the last, excuse me, piece of the puzzle. So, fa'amanna, and we believed immediately. We were of those people that said, "We we we believe in what this uh, caller is calling and asking for." Rabbana faghfir lana dhunubana, O our Lord. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our uh, deeds that we have overlooked. وَكَفِّرْ عَنَّا سَيِّئَاتِنَا And bury for us our evil deeds. And um, so, so the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here has differentiated ذُنُوبَنَا and سَيِّئَاتِنَا um, A lot of the Mufassirun, they mentioned that Dunubana uh, are your are your minor sins. Are your, your just your sins per se. But sayyatina are like these evil evil things or just they're nasty. It comes from the word su and and even um, something that's used for like a corpse or a dead body in Arabic. So you have this idea that that there's these deeds and and you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has hidden them in in 
in this world for us and so they're not uh, open and uh, our, our, our sayyat are not open to other people but we all know there are things that they are so evil that we hate that the fact that we do these things or th that we have done these things so uh, uh, and we're asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, oh allah wa kaffir anna sayyadina just make them so far away and bury them don't even let anybody see that these exist and so uh it's like you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven those sins like he's covered them up for you right but some when when you when something's covered you can still see in general the outline of it right so if, if you have like a car and you have a car protector that you have a sheet that you put on it you can still pretty much tell that there's some sort of a vehicle or something underneath it or if you have like a pile of things and you're trying to cover it when your guests come over you put a sheet over it they 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 know that there's something underneath of it and so we're so ashamed of these sayyat we're asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh allah make it so people don't even know that these exist just bury them into the ground for us um and and, and bring us up amongst the righteous the meaning the ones the people of bir the ones who are righteous and and this is so amazing because just by the fact that we're asking to be brought up amongst those who are righteous meaning we were in the make us in this world uh, put us in a company of the righteous as well so naturally you know you're going to be with those who you love most or those who you spend the most time with and so if we're going to be um at uh, hanging out with individuals who may not have such a religious mindset or people who who are um, against the religion, then then you be resurrected with those individuals. But we're asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Oh Allah, resurrect us or raise us with the with the righteous people, so that Oh Allah, even in this world, make it so that we are amongst the righteous people. And and then it continues, Rabbana. Oh, our Lord, and give us whatever you have promised us through your messengers. And do not humiliate us on the day of Qiyamah. Again, this idea of, of humiliation is coming up again. So we're so worried that um, we will be exposed on this day of judgment. We are constantly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kafir anna sayyatina wa la tukhzina, that don't, don't humiliate us, don't expose our sins. And some of them of Fasirun, they have said that on the day of judgment, the situation will be so bad that you would want to be, uh, for those people who have been uh, deemed to go to hell, they would say that just throw us into hell. We don't want our audits to be so public that people can see what we used to do in this world so that's the type of fear that that will be on that day and we're asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today so that we don't have to have that fear on the day of judgment so wala tukhzina yawm al qiyamah that don't don't um humiliate us on on the day of judgment innaka la tukhliful mi'ad indeed um you are not one to break your promise so then and and so this is the the dua that we have made to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the most uh, common things that you know when we ask duas you know after prayer at different times throughout the day we're like so do you know do you think um, it's going to be accepted how do we know it's going to be accepted and there's many ways that um, we have been told how when we make a dua we know that it's accepted but this dua that if we were to make this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran is telling you he answers this dua fastajaba lahum then he answered them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fastajaba lahum rabbuhum then uh, their lord answered them so i.e when you and i we make this dua allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us right in the next verse that he's going to he's going to answer this dua <clears throat> أَنِّي لَا أُعْدِئُ عَمَلَ عَامِلٍ مِّنْكُمْ مِّنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى That I will not let waste a deed of any one who does a deed from you all, whether it be a male or a female. And meaning somebody who consciously does something good for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
or who consciously does a good deed, i.e. for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, or he's promising that he will not let that deed go to waste. Ba'dukum min ba'd, that you are all from each other. فَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا وَأُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he's giving examples of what uh, you have gone through. The one who has, who did hijrah. Now, um, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, we know that there were muhajirun, the people who left from Mecca and came to Medina. But by extension, this also means, you know, you are in a crowd of people who weren't necessarily the most Islamic or who necessarily didn't really care for um, what, what the religion had said. But yet, you made that struggle that once you realized that I am... I, I want to I want to better myself and you made hijrah away from them. That that's talking to you as well. Wa and you you were expelled from your wa ukhriju min diyarihim and they were expelled from their homes. Wa fi sabilillah and they took hardships in my path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking in the first person, telling them that you know you took a you took this hardship in my path, wa qatalu and you you fought and, uh, and you were killed and here there's so much emphasis that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places on this word he's saying surely with no doubt I will will definitely definitely bury your sins away from you I will bury your sayyat away from you so that um that you don't have anything to worry about on the day of judgment and wala udkhilannahum jannatin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar and i will enter them into a garden under which there are rivers which flow and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again he's using the first person udkhilannahum i will enter them and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't do this very often but he's trying to show you the closeness if you take that first step to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I will take your hand and I will enter you into Jannah, meaning that I'll take the responsibility for you to enter Jannah. Uh, so this is a reward. This is a, a reward. This is a compensation of those hardships that you went through. Wallahu indahu husnu thawab, and indeed with Allah is the the best of best of um, recompense or um, payments you can say. La yagur. So now Allah subhanahu wa taala. Uh, so the passage shifts uh, to the to the believers, and it's telling them la yagurun naka taqallub aladina kafaru fil fil bilad. So don't let the movements of the disbelievers from land to land, from whatever plots that they're having, don't let that deceive you. Mata'un qalil thumma ma'awahum jahannam. It's a it's a minor uh, enjoyment for them. They think that they are accomplishing so much, but in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it's nothing. It's very little, and um, it's a temporary form of whatever their enjoyment that they may be getting of in other places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this um, almost uh, cynical comment by saying ma'wahum jahannam wa bi'sal mihad because ma'wa is like a place of refuge. Uh, it comes from awa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them for them it's like a, it's a satirical way of telling them where their final abode is going to be. And their place of refuge is going to be the hellfire. And what bi'sa al-mihad. Bi'sa is like a, a way of explain, expressing how terrible or how disgusting um, something is. And what bi'sa al-mihad. Mihad actually comes from a, it has a positive connotation to it. It's the cradle of a mother. It's like when your mom squeezes you out of love and she just hugs you and kisses you. Um, uh, and that's what mihad is. But what bi'sa al-mihad, this jahannam is going to do this to them. It's just going to squeeze the life out of them and how terrible um, cradle that that's going to be. Uh, and then it continues. However, for the ones who have taqwa, and their Lord, lahum jannatin tajrim in And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follows up that passage uh, 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 regarding the disbelievers and immediately says, but the ones who have taqwa, 
who are conscious, who are trying and making an effort and striving towards remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their Lord, they're going to have gen gardens under which rivers flow. Khalidina fiha. They're going to live in it forever. Nuzulam, as a form of enjoyment. And the idea is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the understanding of Jannah through examples from this worldly life. But yet we know it's much, much more than that. So this is what Nuzula actually really is doing here. It's just, that's the appetizer. That's giving you an idea of what it's going to be like. But then, Sorry, Nuzula min indillah wa ma indallahi khairul abrar. Lil abrar. So meaning that the actually the final resting place, the final, the best thing that you are going to have is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we can't even imagine and it's for the righteous. So, so we're this. What we're told about Jannah is just glimpses of what we can actually imagine about it. So, what we Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us that the rest of it actually is going to be much more greater uh, than what we can imagine. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala continues um, in 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 the second to last ayah, wa inna min ahlil kitabi. So these are like the concluding remarks of the surah. Um, so it's actually wrapping up a lot of what was happening throughout the surah, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is just wrapping it up by saying, wa inna min ahlil kitabi la yu'minu billahi wa ma unzila ilaykum wa ma unzila ilayhim khashirina lillahi la yashtaruna bi ayat illahi thamanan qalila and indeed from the people of the book there are those who believe in Allah and what was revealed to you and what was revealed to them khashirina lillah and they're actually they have in their heart fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yashtaruna bi and they're the ones who don't sell their ayahs uh, for, for for the signs for a um, a petty price so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the believers that even from the ahl al-kitab uh, the, from the Jews and the Christians, there are going to be people who are going to be true to the religion, who are going to actually have a positive impact. Um, maybe you're just not aware of them yet. And also for them, they're going to have a, a reward with their Lord. In Allah Sari al Hisab, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is quick to, to audit or judge. And this last ayah is, is basically the highlight we can say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concluding the whole surah with and he it's almost like you know when um, class is finishing up and your teacher tells you hey don't forget this or you're leaving the house and your mom tells you don't forget to do this this and this this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kind of leaving us with he's saying ya ayyuhalladhina amanu he redirects because he's telling basic he's calling the believers if you call yourself a believer whatever's about to follow is very very important Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sabiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqullaha la'allakum tuflihun And what's amazing is that you, you, you hear it as well There's two words that are like the same that repeat one after another Isbiru wa sabiru And it's like be patient and then be patient again um, But there's something slightly different And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this on purpose to show So first he's saying be patient you're going to have hardships. It's not going to come easy. There's going to be obstacles along the way. But be patient through them. Wasabiru, and this uh, form of the fail uh, or the verb, it has the idea of between each other. There's going to be a group of people who are going to be wanting to do harm to you. They're going to be wanting to do harm to Islam. But you have to be more patient than they are. You have to have a higher level of sabr, of persistence of resistance in order to continue in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa rabitu um, means to be uh, to be ready to always have um, your edge or to your guard up to be aware um, of whatever the surrounding and whatever the situations are and what taqullah and be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la'allakum tuflihun so perhaps you may be successful and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes this in such a beautiful way, reminding us that this is what the ultimate goal is. So that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we may be successful. Tuflihun. So Jazakallah khair uh, for your time. Uh, Brother Shrach, I will hand it back to you. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank <laughs> you.
Jazakallah khairan, Brother Bilal. Um, inshallah, we'll move to the uh, Q&A session. So um, please submit your questions uh, through the questions panel in the webinar. So inshallah, um, a first question. In verse 196, um, it was said that, be not deceived by the uninhibited movement of the disbelievers throughout the land. Can you give some per perception on what do you think are the main deceptions that face Muslims today and, and pick what you think are maybe the top one or two uh, and how should we deal with these de deceptions as, as Muslims? Sure. Um, so uh, in, in the context that when it was revealed uh, you know, the Muslims at that time were also going through a lot of trials and tribulations of, of their own, uh, whether it was um, poets who were in, in, in Medina who were openly uh, asking or, or, you know, defaming Islam or the Prophet And in America today, uh, you know, that's, it's a very, I mean, throughout, so throughout media, uh, unfortunately, Islam isn't painted in the best of uh, lights. And so I think there's a lot of effort, uh, conscious effort, I, I would say, that's made to paint Islam in, in a negative light. And, you know, it's, it's surprising that still uh, Islam is one of the fastest growing religion, even though that is the case. So, I mean, that's just one example that comes, you know, to the top of my mind, but, you know, whether it's the Muslim ban or um, different things that are done by the administration to prevent Muslims from trying to succeed, but they don't realize what we need to realize is that the true power is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they can continue to do uh, whatever is on their agenda, but if we stick to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continue to do our part, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually promised us a victory. Jazakallah khair. In the hadith that you quoted, you mentioned that um, Bilal radiallahu anhu said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to Bilal that um, Allah subhanahu wa taala has forgiven all his present and future sins. However, it's hard to imagine that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has committed any sins. Mm -hmm. uh, please, can you clarify this? Sure. So um, I'll, I'll reread that portion just to make sure if I if I said anything incorrectly. Um, so when Bilal Ta'ala who entered and he asked and he informed him, i.e. the Prophet ﷺ, about the time of Fajr Salah, Sayyidina Bilal said, my master, why do you weep like that? Isn't it that Allah Almighty has forgiven you all your past and future sins? Um, and so then the Prophet ﷺ responded. Now, um, we know that the Prophet ﷺ, yes, as you mentioned, uh, has not committed uh, any, any sins, and um, we do believe that. Uh, but in terms of, um, I think what, what, we are, what we also believe is that there are what we call them um, mistakes, but they're not sins. So, for example, when uh, the Surah Abbas wa Tawalla, when the Prophet ﷺ, uh, frowned at a, a blind man, so it's not like, I mean, he even hurt his feelings or anything. He just, it, the blind man couldn't see, but it was a mistake on the part of the Prophet ﷺ. Um, and, and that is what I'm aware with, and I wouldn't be able to answer that to any more extent. Okay. In the um, last verse of um, this surah, you yeah. emphasize the importance of sabr. Can you give us some tips on how to increase in sabr? <laughs> um, that's always, always very, very um, hard. And patience is something that it, it's easier said when you're not angry or when you're not in the situation which requires for you to be patient. Um, but I think uh, thinking about the blessings that you have when you're not in a time of hardship uh, is the best way that I found for myself to be patient in the times that I am in a hardship because it's much easier to recollect those blessings if you have been constantly um, thinking about them 
rather than uh, if you have just been taking them for granted and all of a sudden something bad happens to you and you're like, no good has ever come into my life. I've always been on the short end of the stick. Um, so that's one way that I've personally found um, that has helped me get through trials or times of trials. And then, um, you know, oftentimes the hardest individuals to have the patience with is probably our own family. Um, and and that, re that requires a great deal of um, patience to deal with them and a, a lot of practice to be able to deal with them in, in the best manner possible. And so I think that's something that we all need to start. We think that we need to practice our patience on like co-workers or colleagues or friends but i think we really need to start closest to home uh and, and start changing our attitudes towards those who we love the most okay in the penultimate verse of this surah the people of the scripture are referred to uh, as believing in allah and in the revelation and that they humbly submit submit to allah mm -hmm. Um, can you comment on what's meant here? I mean, are these people of the scripture considered to be Muslims? Uh, and are these people of the scripture similar or different to the Christians and the Jews of today? Sure. Um, so what I can say is what the ayah says, wa inna min ahlil kitab, and from the people of the book. So meaning there is a subset or a category of individuals who have been given the book, i.e. the Christians and the Jews. And that 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 is what we know. Um, in terms of the second part of the question about uh, whether they are Muslims, um, that's a good question. I don't have the answer uh, for you on that. Okay. Um, there is a question um, regarding this surah in the context of Juma Qutbah. Is this surah recited often in the Juma Qutbah? Um, I don't. No, uh, I don't think uh, I, I haven't recited it in Juma. I haven't heard it and come across any hadith. But uh, again, that's a that's something I think you want to ask somebody of, of knowledge. Okay. Um, in the verse um, where it said that never will I allow the uh, the work of any workers among you to be lost. Yes. What inspiration can we get from this verse as uh, people who are striving to do the work of the deen? Um, what inspiration can we get to, to help us in whether we're doing work of ICNA uh, or, or of another organization um, by reflecting on this verse? I mean, you know, off, whenever we do something for, for work, for school, for class, um, typically the goal is to be recognized or to, to get a good grade or to say, good job, you know, you did well. Um, and we do that, and to be frank, that's usually the reason why we put our best effort or the best foot forward in doing those things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually giving us a guarantee that if you put your best foot forward, and guaranteeing that I'm going to accept what you do. So it doesn't matter when you organized an event and only two people showed up, or um, you've been out doing street dawah and nobody has taken shahada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just wants us to do our part. The results are in His hands. And when you do uh, the work of deen with that mindset that you don't essentially care about the outcome I, I mean that's a very blunt way to put it but you don't the, the outcome is not going to affect your personal morale and you do it for sincerely the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you know that your work is going to be accepted then it really shifts our perspective on how we continue to do it because a lot of times we get demoralized or motivated or um, because we, we're not quote unquote seeing the results of our efforts and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again like I mentioned and this ayah is guaranteeing 
that your efforts will be accepted as long as they're sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, in this surah, it is recommended that we have a sound mind and always remember Allah. How can we as believers protect our spirits from negativity and not fall short of falsehood? Yeah, so an ulul al-bab uh, is, is what is mentioned here. And um, the, the answer is actually quite harsh from when I looked into it. Um, you know, we fill our minds with so much junk, right? Um, let's say uh, on a given day, our diet is like 95% junk food. And then we eat like a carrot and a broccoli and we say we, we're, we're eating healthy. Um, that's kind of like the, the lifestyle for our minds that we're living, right? Our, like our day-to-day -day is full of consumption of things that are essentially not really beneficial for us, whether it's, you know, TV sh shows, sports, um, news, uh, you know, the list can go on and on. Um, and, and we're constantly feeding off of those things. And that's what's filling our minds. That's what's cluttering our minds. Um, whether it's different types of stats, things, how much things are cost or going for sale for, um, what's going on in some parts of, of the country or in the parts of the world, which you know we may not have the ability to change. I'm not saying to just stop all that, but I'm just giving the example that that's what's cluttering our mind. And then you know we have a 10-minute um, session, 20-minute session, an hour session uh, a week to say that. Now I want to have an ulul al-bab. I want to have a sound mind after this one hour. So you can kind of see the analogy. It's going to take a lot of, you know, detox to get away from these things, to start living a healthier lifestyle, to, to really make that change possible. Inshallah, uh, we will see you next week. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiru wa atubu alaykum. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لا في خصم إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم